As we mentioned, Health News Tonight is encouraging news on one of the big mysteries in medicine, MS, multiple sclerosis. Doctors don't know what causes it, but tonight some promising research shows a new drug may play an important role in managing the disease that often hits women during the prime years of their lives, including the wife of presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Our report tonight from our chief science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Ann Romney is one of about 400,000 Americans living with multiple sclerosis. What a welcome! So is Lori Osco, who is among the 1,400 volunteers in the study out today, showing that a new pill called BG12 is easy to take and highly effective. It's just been wonderful. It's just been a whole different um, aspect of dealing with MS. In MS, the immune system that usually fights disease attacks nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord, leaving areas of scar tissue that show up as white areas on an MRI brain scan. Often it strikes women in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, and men in later years. MS can affect vision, movement, strength, sensation, bowel, bladder, sexual function, mood, cognition. Everything the brain does can be impaired from MS. BG12 is not a cure. We really don't know what sets this off. Like the nine other drugs already on the market, it reduces the number of nerve cell attacks called flare-ups, but more so than most others, and with fewer side effects. It's a truly frightening disease. It is. It is expected to cost the same as the others, about $50,000 a year. The most effective drug is called Tysabri, but it's an infusion that has to be given once a month and it carries the risk of serious side effects, including brain infection. Marjorie Hines plans to switch if BG12 wins FDA approval, expected in a few months. Because of the risk of the brain infection and um, because of convenience. This takes three hours every month, and, you know, you're sitting in a chair. Experts welcome the new medication. Clearly, it's a big step in the right direction. But they emphasize it is not the cure that everyone wants. Robert Vizell, NBC News, Cleveland.
what they did. Mm -hmm. Take a look at these mice, what you're going to see in a second. See, Tony, there on the right, you've got a mouse. You see he's kind of gray, the one yeah. on the right, yeah, and yeah. he's kind of balding a little bit. Yeah. And so he was not treated with this genetic engineering, but they did treat the one on the left. And so gray hair became dark again. Mm -hmm. uh, shrunk braids that had kind of shrunk with age, sort of de-shrunk, as it were. The ones, the old mice, their fertility was really plummeting. Their fertility was sort of born again after this uh, genetic treatment. Um, but we don't have a before and after. Well, well we you can kind of, that's not really a before and after, right. but you can kind of see the, the guy on the right is yes. old, the guy yes. on the left was old, but now was he's young. Old. Okay, right. okay. Was old, but now We'll he's take your young. word for that. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. So, that, so that's basically what we're seeing right there. So I want to bring in Dr. Ronald Pino, mm. who's at the Dana-Farber Cancer Center, which is uh, affiliated with Harvard uh, Medical School, and he is going to talk to us about the incredible Terrific. things that he did. Dr. Pino, great to see you. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you for your interest. Oh, great. So have you found the Fountain of Youth? Well, what we've learned is that there is a point of return for even aged tissues, uh, that uh, tissues retain the remarkable capacity to rejuvenate if you remove the underlying cause of the aging, which in this case was excessive DNA damage uh, in the mice. And DNA damage is a major cause of aging. And essentially what we did in these mice was to have increased damage and then erase that damage and we were expecting a, a an attenuation a slowing of the aging process but what we saw as you described in your lead uh, a remarkable reversal of many of the signs and symptoms of aging so dr pino if i came to you and let's say i said hey i'm 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 old i'm 70 years old and i want to look young again i want to be fertile again could you do it well, I think the implications are that if we understood the basic underpinnings of aging and were to alleviate that, that there would be the potential for uh, increased healthy living, whether or not there would be a significant reversal, a Ponce de Leon-like effect, I think remains to be determined. We have to keep in mind that in natural aging, there are many factors, many co-conspirators that cooperate to compromise the health of the individual and so one would really need to understand all of those factors and reverse them in order to have the sorts of result that you're having but again it does teach us that there is a point of return even for fairly uh, degenerated uh, tissues so you went in dr. Pino and you messed with the very DNA of these mice you went into their genes and played around with them is it even legit to do that on humans? Is it okay? Well, we're, we're not in the business of uh, genetically engineering humans, uh, but there may be pharmacological means by which one can uh, reactivate, re reawaken the gene that is responsible for repairing the DNA, particularly the DNA at the tips of chromosomes, which become frayed. This is an enzyme known as telomerase. And one could imagine that reawakening the telomerase enzyme, which is normally low or absent in our cells, could uh, reset uh, the clock, uh, the rejuvenative potential of our tissues. So do you plan on studying this in humans anytime soon? Well, I think that the uh, mice have been really outstanding in giving, illuminating the complexity of human biology. So I think these insights now give us a path towards trying to at least quell the type of damage at the tips of chromosomes that might impact on years of uh, healthy living uh, in humans in the years ahead. Okay, Dr. Pino, thank you so much. Exciting work and congratulations.